Banana pop and they're not singing his song All the little birds on Jaybird Street Love to hear the robin go tweet tweet Good morning! How are you all? I'm Heather Sanders, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Banana Pop 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 Banana Pop
My grandmother, at the end of her life, developed the relentless disease known as Alzheimer's. Now, I have two current friends, both living with terminal cancer. And they make what sometimes seems to other people like irreverent jokes about their situation. They laugh about the current state of their lives. I call it their sense of tumor. <laughs> They insist that humor is the only way to get through something that crappy. My grandmother also had a wicked sense of humor. She had a humor in, every fa in the face of everything she faced in her life. Until I was 12 years old, I really thought my grandfather's given name was asshole. <laughs> As my grandmother slipped further down the rabbit hole of her disease, she began to do things that didn't make any sense, as is common with Alzheimer's. And one of those things was that for no explainable reason whatsoever, she would raise her middle fingers up during prayer. <laughs> I don't care how old you are, that's funny. <laughs> and we would lovingly lower her arms and say, Grandma, we're talking to the Lord right now. And she'd say, he's seen him before. <laughs> My grandmother's song speaks to me today. My grandmother, in the face of a disease that warped her brain and wrapped around her memories, stayed true to her song, her character, her humor. All the way to the end, my grandmother had it. And as a result, her life song speaks to me. When people make me feel less, when I worry that someone is judging me, when I get unconfident about a situation, I know who I am. I sing my life song that is authentic to me because my grandmother demonstrated that. And she's also helped me face very difficult situations with a sense of humor that I wouldn't have had without her. The second life song I would like to talk about today is Jason, my Jay, as I called him. Jason was a student in my 10th grade English class, and then again as a senior in my 12th grade English class. As most 10th graders can be, he was a little squirrely, and by the time he was a senior, he had mellowed out, he had matured. He was much more inter uh, internalizing of his behaviors. Jason loved to write, but not English assignments. Jason wrote song lyrics the whole time I was teaching. Jason wrote letters to his girlfriend, but the thing that Jason was most known for was lists. He loved to make lists. He would sit in class and make lists of everything he had to do that day, everything he had already done that day, everything he wished he had done that day, and just list, list, list. I distinctly remember one day walking up to Jason's desk and saying, what's the list about today, Jay? And he said, prom. It's everything I have to do before prom. And I looked down at his desk, and the first thing on the list was make more lists. I can't make it up. We laughed. I remember that moment beautifully. The week of Jason's graduation from high school, he came to my classroom and, asked, and handed me an envelope, and he asked me not to read it until he left. As is typical for teenage boys, they're not very um, acute about showing their emotions. So I waited till he left, and I read it, and I'm going to read you a portion of that letter now. I believe that everyone deserves another chance, no matter what they've done. Just like the quote from the diary of Anne Frank, everyone is good at heart. If someone can truly say they're sorry and mean it, they most likely have learned their lesson and deserve another chance. In conclusion, I want to let you know that if ever in your life you regret the path that you've chosen, or you feel that you haven't made a difference in any way, you have. You have created a huge impact on my life alone and have given me so much to think about in the years to come, not to mention how many others you have helped. You are and always will be a great person. You'll always hold a special place in my heart. Love, Jason. P.S. Please don't beat me up for making this one big long paragraph. <laughs> Jason died two years after he graduated in a horrible car accident. Jason's song sings to me every day. Give people second chances. You are making a difference. Everyone is good at heart.
What a gift his song is to me. I've spoken to his parents. I spoke to both of them before today to make sure it was all right that I demonstrated uh, his letter to you. And they both were happy to hear from me. And I made sure to tell them how Jason's song is still being sung. I've been a teacher for 16 years. I've lost 11 students to death, seven of them in violence. When I open the newspaper and I read where they were, who they were with, what they were suspected to be doing, or what time it was, I don't remember any of those details. I remember the little boy named Solomon who begged me to call him Dee Dee because he hated his name and how much he loved his brother. I remember Crystal's laugh and how it filled the whole classroom and how loyal she was to her best friends. I remember Cora who stopped in the middle of an actual fire evacuation to assist a student who had fallen. Those life songs stay with us. When people have a positive impact on your life, you carry that with you forever. And it can go the other way too. Now, when I think about those students, I think about the lessons I've learned. And what is the lesson here? I think their lives are the lesson. What if it was gone tomorrow? What song are you singing? What song lyrics are people hearing from you in your day-to-day -day interactions? How is your song making people feel? I know what my song is. My song is kindness, my song is acceptance, my song is tolerance. But the times in my life that I regret the most are the times when I didn't sing it. I didn't sing it. I watched a stranger struggle and I either pretended not to notice or consciously decided not to care. When a sister needed my support, when a brother needed rescue from judgment, and I swallowed my song, despite knowing that singing it was the right thing to do. So we all want to sing a song of kindness, right? I mean, we all agree songs of kindness are the goal. But some of you might have used naughty fingers in traffic on the way here already this morning. So the problem is that love is a verb. Kindness takes self-discipline, tremendous self-discipline. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes money sometimes. It takes your energy to be there and offer your, so your song of kindness to others. And how do you really know? How do you know what your song is singing to others? How do you know the impact you're making? I would argue that perfection is not the goal. It's not realistic. We are not a perfect people. I think it's a commitment to being self-aware. When you are self-aware, you are accepting that you need to be deeply, deeply, personally honest with yourself. We know when the songs we sing are ugly. You have to be honest when frustration, annoyance, irritation, anger, a lack of sleep, hunger are impacting the song you're singing to someone else. You have to be able to be aware of those times, step back, and readjust the lyrics to your song. Now, scientists have actually been studying this for years. Neuroscience research has been absolutely unequivocally positive that when you commit regular acts of kindness to others, when you make other people feel good, your brain physically changes. It builds, sustains, it fuels, it hardwires differently so that you are trained to think differently. You are different when you are kind to others and not just the people you think deserve it, especially the people you think don't. We are smarter, we are faster, we are stronger when we practice kindness regularly. That's the, real, that's the reality, science has proven it. So we've got to make that conscious effort to commit to regularly making others feel good. It's, I love that dress, where'd you get those shoes? Sitting down with someone and saying, I have felt how you feel. Those are the difference makers. Everything in your life will be greatly enhanced if you are able to do that. Your job, your relationship with your partners, your relationship with your friends, your coworkers, everything is faster, stronger, and better when you regularly practice kindness. Science backs it. So why is it so difficult? We need to sing our songs of love and kindness more, more often. 
Have you ever been in public and watched your phone search for a signal? And it does that little cool thing that makes us say bad words. It says searching for connection. Yeah, we're all searching for connection too. The phone will not work if it is not connected. We do not work our best unless we are connected. You have to make the effort to connect to others. Now, the world's an imperfect place. If you want to be angry, there is plenty to be angry about. There are plenty of reasons to be upset. There's injustice and suffering and inequality and feelings of judgment and things that you feel should be different. But guess what? Here's the secret. That's when you love bigger. That's when you sing louder. Because what if someone else views your song, hears your words, and they begin to sing? And then someone else sings their song, and someone else sings their song. It would be the most beautiful chorus of human kindness that could ever exist on this planet. Operate from a grateful heart. I read recently that gratitude is an awareness and acknowledgement in our soul that things could have been different. That things could have been different. Be grateful. Be joyful, bring that to others. So I'm gonna end this the same way I started it. How many of you know the words to your song? And would you sing it to a stranger? Thank you. <laughs>